Fertile Markets, that's the topic of this week's Stock Scores Market Minutes for August 6, 2012. If you'd like to subscribe to my free weekly newsletter, go to stockscores.com slash newsletters.asp. You know, markets go through phases where buyer enthusiasm rises and falls. I know in my own trading, I will have periods where everything seems to work, trading is easy, and then just a few short days later, everything can be difficult and trades fail to work. Well, I've done a lot of thinking about this and I've come to realize that there's a correlation between where the market is relative to its trend line and how easy it is to trade. It's easiest to make money trading when the buyers are enthusiastic, when markets are fertile. And to determine the level of enthusiasm, inspect the intraday chart of the index to see where price is relative to the price channel. Let's take a look at a chart of the S&P 500 on a 30-minute interval going back one month. You can see that there have been periods where the market rose for three or four days, certainly from July 12th until July 19th we had that situation, again from July 25th until the end of July, and more recently over the last three days we've had a pretty good run higher. Well, during those phases, the market was pretty easy to trade. The buyers were enthusiastic. But at a certain point, when the market gets to the top of the channel, the enthusiasm wanes, and suddenly the trades that have great setups just don't have the same kind of follow-through. The point is, you need to look at the overall index chart to determine where the market is relative to its price channel, and be careful when the market is near the top of an upward sloping price channel and look for opportunities when the market has fallen to the bottom of the upward price channel. By keeping an eye on this index chart and this concept of where price is relative to the channel, you'll know, or at least have a better idea of, when the markets are fertile. All right, let's get into the analysis for this week. The S&P 500 remains in an upward trend, but it is a very volatile upward trend. Look at the range of trading since June relative to the upward trend that started the year from January until March. That high level of uncertainty is shown in the volatility of this chart. Now, the upward trend is intact, and I expect that the market will continue to move up toward the red line of resistance because, in general, the economy is getting better. However, there's lots of uncertainty. Every day we hear about messages that something might go wrong in Europe or that jobs numbers aren't as good as, as they could be or that the Fed will or will not do quantitative easing. So there's lots of uncertainty in the market and that is why we want to be careful when the market rallies and look for opportunity when the market is suffering in pullbacks. TSX chart is very different. It remains in a downward trend, but it is testing that downward trend line, and we are coming to a critical point because we are nearing the pointy end of the triangle that I've drawn on the chart. Now, what that means is that volatility is diminishing, investors are getting more confident, and at a certain point, we're going to get a break from this pattern. Now, since the trend is down in this pattern, we shouldn't get too optimistic until that trend line can break, but it is worth noting that the Canadian dollar has actually done very well in the last little while, and that's probably because the U.S. dollar is weakening. That means commodity prices are getting better, and that could be supportive for the Canadian stock market. The VIX is in a downward sloping channel. It's at the top of that channel right now. In some ways, I think that this is getting a little bit oversold. It moved to new lows in the last few days, and you know, really when you look at the spot, price of the VIX, it's probably moving away from its correlation to that index. However, we have to see here that the sellers are in control and until that downward trend line, the line in red is broken, I remain bearish on the VIX, which is really actually good for stocks because it's a sign that fear is dissipating. The bond market, 20-year Treasury bond ETF TLT, broke its upward trend line in the last few days, broke down from a falling top. That's a positive sign for stocks because it means that money may start to come out of risk-free assets and into more risky stocks where returns are potentially higher. U.S. dollar, a really tough chart to read because it's all over the place. Certainly in the last week or two, it has been weak, and the euro has started to firm up a little bit, but I wouldn't call it a, a real definitive chart, one that we can say is obvious of where it's going. 
I think this chart is almost random in how it moves. And so I don't think that we can gather a great message from this one. Of course, if there is quantitative easing, the speculation is that the U.S. dollar will fall. I'm not convinced that that's the case. I think that if everyone is doing quantitative easing, the economy that is strongest, which is probably the U.S. in, in the world right now, is probably going to be the one that holds its currency best. So don't fall into this trap in thinking that quantitative easing means the U.S. dollar goes down and commodities necessarily go up. Gold is um, remains in a downward trend. I've drawn two red lines there. One is kind of the short-term line across the top. So if we look at this chart on a longer-term basis, the top red line is the one that cuts across the two major tops on the gold chart. So we haven't really reversed that long-term pessimism yet, but it is encouraging if you are a gold bug, a bullish person on gold, the fact that this market has started to break higher. I still am a believer that gold is likely going lower in the next uh, few months. I'm sort of surprised, uh, well I'm not really surprised, I should say I'm, I, I think it's worth noting that gold has not been as strong as you would expect given all the talk about quantitative easing, given the weakness in the US dollar the last couple of weeks. Gold isn't doing what it should do given those things and that tells me that the buyers just aren't all that enthusiastic about gold. Oil has been making a comeback, but really a comeback from very oversold conditions. And I think that that comeback will continue because we remain below that long-term trend line. You know, of course, there is weakness or, pardon me, concern in the global um, world about oil supply, you know, what's happening in the Middle East, that sort of thing. And that, I think, helps gold make this, or pardon me, make oil make this comeback. And I think, as I said, we probably have a little more upside here in oil, but I don't think it's going to go through that downward trend line too easily. So overall then, I remain neutral on everything. I think U.S. stocks are going to slowly move higher, but in the short term, they probably pull back for a few days. Canadian stocks are nearing that critical point where we're going to get a break one way or the other. Break of the downward trend line is starting to look pretty good because of the strength in the Canadian dollar. Gold neutral, oil neutral. I think that what's encouraging for the stock market is the weakness we've started to see in treasuries, the fact that um, the U.S. dollar is drifting lower, and of, of course all of the efforts that are being made to make the economy better. Companies are tightening their belts, uh, central banks are really working to stimulate the economy. It seems like anytime there's any kind of weakness in the world, someone steps in to help it out. So. Although markets are not showing great optimism now, the breakdowns in the volatility index in U.S. Treasuries is encouraging. In the very short term, I expect a pullback, but the market recovery should continue in the weeks to come. Canadian markets are nearing an important turning point. Well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Minutes for August 6, 2012. Have a great week in the market and trade well.